Hey, it's Jerry with TradeToFifth.com. Wanted to take you through a little Wave 5 trade I took on Friday. I don't normally take trades on Friday, but the setup looked pretty good. And uh, it's what I call my beer money trade that I'll do on a Friday once in a while. But one of the things I wanted to start with is getting uh, folks to think a little bit about uh, price action, opening range, trades, and other things. I've had a few videos that have talked about this. I've showed it in volume profile, but this is this week's price action has just been perfect for getting through a couple of points that I wanted to make and get people to think a little bit about as they're looking at futures trade. In this case, I've got the ES showing the week, uh, last trading week. I have the extended trading hours turned off, which you can do in the futures panel. You hit the gear on the chart, go to the futures, and show extended hours trading session. In this particular case, I turned it off, and I'm really trying to, trying to make a point with some pictures here. Um, on the Tuesday price action, Monday was a holiday, so on Tuesday in the regular time trading session we had the close on Monday was up here, the open was down here, and you can see we had a gap. And typically the bigger the gap, the more likely the direction is going to continue in that gap. Often you'll get an open, a little bit of correction into the gap, and if the gap is strong and the price direction is strong, you'll, oftentimes you'll get uh, trend days out of these kind of activity. And Tuesday was a perfect example. We gapped down, we tested a little bit into the gap, and then price really just started heading down, down, down. And anytime you had pullbacks towards the cloud uh, and you could draw little trend lines, you know, from, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, showing this. I mean, you could draw little trend lines. Uh, that show this price activity, you know, and, and any time you broke the trend line, you would have been rewarded uh, for shorts, right? These are all little bear flagging patterns on a downtrend uh, day. And any one of them you took, you would have been uh, rewarded down until, you know, maybe this last period. And it's a good example of what a trend day is like. You could almost get in just about anywhere early in the session if you recognize it, and you could ride um, a pretty good day uh, all the way down. So I'm going to zoom back out here. So that's how Monday's price or Tuesday's action worked. And then you can see another example of what can happen on a gap. In this particular case, we had a gap up, and within the first hour to two hours of trading, we tried, to, we tried testing higher, found sellers, and actually drove back through the ch back through, closed the gap, and drove right back down, and we actually made a lower low than the prior day's low. So this is another example of what can happen. Big gap, you think it could be a trend day. Within the first hour or two, typically is when you'll start seeing, unless it's a news-driven action, you'll see uh, price will either continue or it will reverse. And often it will be on pretty good volume. You can see the volume started picking up in this, this area here. Um, in that action and really I mean I can zoom in on all this stuff and you can do it on your charts yourself uh, during this week of the uh, ending on the 26th of January 2019 but really what I'm trying to do is get, get give you a sense for what the regular time hours session gap activity after the open is and give you an idea of how you really want to start the day so in this case we had a gap we tested higher found sellers drove it all the way back down to a lower low um, and then the price action actually came back and rebalanced. So we have an area in this area here that's sort of a balancing area where we've had price action above and below, above and below, and we're kind of centered around this 26, 35, 36, you know, this kind of zone. Look at uh, Thursday's price action. We actually opened well within the range, right in the middle of the range pretty much of the day before. In the regular time hours and this went towards uh, some activity I showed in the Thursday video on range day trading so we stayed right within the range we had a pullback out of this range for the day it was a good buying opportunity which I did I did not see it uh, based on how much time and volume had gone off in this area during the day to me this looked like it was looking for buyers and sure enough we pulled down got some buyers and I took this trade back up so here's Friday's price action. We had a big gap up, right? 26.35 to the open 
uh, here, I guess we opened right around there, 2661. So that's 26 or so points. That's a pretty big opening gap. Obviously, all the overnight inventory from the close on Thursday to the regular time open was high, right? It was above the close. So all the overnight price action was above the closing price of the day before. And typically what you would see is uh, getting into this day, you can see that right at the open we had some of those people liquidating, you know, the short-term traders, overnight traders taking profits are going to liquidate a little bit. And you start working your way into the gap. But we very quickly found support and then actually drove right back up again. So to me, that was a good indication that we had price acceptance at higher prices. And they were actually towards not only the highs of, of that day, but for the week, right? So we started getting right up towards uh, the prior week's uh, close was around 2676, right around, not the close, the high was around 2676.50. And we started driving right up towards that during this beginning part of the session. So looking at this area around 11 o'clock, we can start seeing uh, price coming back. So we have uh, the gap up on the day, pretty big gap. We sold off a little bit and then we started driving higher, right? So buyers are trying to drive this market higher. Then around 1040, uh, 1045 or so, we start getting an abatement of the selling, some uh, buying and some of the sellers come in. So what, what am I really looking for? If I'm going to take a trade on Friday, what does this trade look like to me? And I'm going to go to the next chart here. I'm going to flip over to one panel because I want to show you the, you know, as I saw this trade unfolding, uh, uh, you know, price was accepted up here. I started seeing a pullback. And from the uh, overnight session, which was you know really down in this area, to this, this is actually a wave one, two, three, four. So we get a wave four pullback that's coming in in this area. And I'm going to start looking for a long trade to actually get up to a wave five high for the day with a target really thinking to be, uh, hoping to be anyway, around this high for the week, 2676.50, which was the high of the previous week didn't quite get there uh, obviously and we had a lot of news driven activity that happened just after this an announcement that uh, President Trump was going to come out and talk about the government shutdown and all that kind of thing so it kind of spoiled the the trade inevitably that I was looking for however I did uh, chase my stop up pretty quickly when we got this burst and, and ended up taking some uh, what I call beer money off the table but let me switch over to that panel now this is showing the price action on Friday um, and how it looked like to me. So I wave count isolated right around here around 5 o'clock in the morning East Coast time. And you can see we do have the wave 1, the wave 2, and the wave 3 that drove up. And once this happened and we started getting the pullback, I start thinking about you know, price being accepted in the regular time hours up in this area. And I'm looking at potentially buying a pullback to a new wave five high, which was indicated up here in the indicator suite that uh, Paul has for us uh, for the Elliott wave indicator. So, you know, and you can see it's validated by the oscillator. You have the wave one high, a wave two pullback, a nice strong wave three. This started, this pullback here may not be quite as deep on a five minute chart, but it, you know, fell within the target zone. And for me, I was looking for a pretty quick trade uh, potentially to get in and out on a uh, Friday afternoon and then you know the all the news stuff I, as I said came after uh, came right around this area just as we popped up to this wave five high and started ruining you know the the activity that was going on here and we went into our uh, maybe a I mean we did make a new wave five high we did you know start an ABC correction after that um, but I think that the trade, you know, kind of work and the trade logic worked uh, nonetheless uh, for for what I was looking for uh, on the pullback. So for me, what I end up doing is I see this pullback and I'm starting to scope the trade to look for some level of buying support. And at this wave four low here, it's about a 50% pullback uh, on the day. And the, I think the Emmer zone targets right in that 50% range. And as I see this thing pulling back into the cloud, I start to see this doji 
uh, kind of uh, candle here um, that to me is I'm starting to see buyers come in and I can see the volume is a little bit higher on this candle than this down candle and I'm starting to feel like we're going to get the price action that I'm looking for for a quick trade and inevitably this did happen we got a second follow through in this candle and then we continue to work our way out um, towards a wave five high and as I looked at the trade I think I took it at 26.66 uh, as I was sharing with Paul what I was looking at um, in this area and I think right around 26.66 which is uh, yeah it's the close of this candle here and I had grabbed it just after it came uh, started coming back out in this uh, bullish price close candle you see we got the stochastic arrow this green arrow I have it painted yellow on my chart but I was set up and took the 26.66 entry we got a pop on this candle on uh, some pretty good volume so that was uh, supporting coming out of this uh, pullback zone and we you know got a little bit of uh, sideways action not a lot of uh, uh, volume activity going on here and then we started getting some chatter of news and we had a quick burst up towards a wave 5 target um, on a lower time frame like a one minute chart I started moving my stops up on two contracts uh, I took one right around here and I took another one about halfway back uh, through this candle or so. I think it ended up being around uh, 300 bucks, 275 to 300 bucks on the trade. Uh, but really what I wanted to go and uh, talk about was the trade logic in the trade, price acceptance at the high and a big gap on the overnight session. I got the pullback I was looking for, found support in the cloud, a couple of dots uh, within the cloud and then the uh, supporting price action to start driving me back out um, you know on a pretty nice Friday afternoon trade on a classic wave 4 pullback uh, wave 5 um, kind of trade so hope that helps and uh, good luck guys on next week and getting a sense for uh, the trading activity that uh, we're trying to teach you here at wave, uh, trade the fifth thanks bye